Across the UK, this is Broadcast Revolution's Radio Road Trip. Hello and welcome to another episode of Broadcast Revolution's Radio Road Trip. And I'm Darren and I'm delighted to say uh, joining me now is Sadie Nine, who's mid-morning presenter over at BBC Essex. Hello, Sadie. Hello, how are you? All right? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for giving up your time uh, for, for, uh, for us today. Um, so we want to, you know, find out a little bit about um, how things have changed uh, over at BBC Essex. And I guess first things first, you know, if you can, in a nutshell, kind of summarise how the last six months um, have been over at BBC Essex. Phew. Well, number one, the first thing was I had to shield because I've had some poorly times. And um, so I was at home. So the biggest thing for me was broadcasting from home. They came and set up the studio, first of all, in my lounge. That didn't quite work because it was really uncomfortable. So they set me up in my kitchen. And so I've got two dogs, two chihuahuas. So it was nervous in a way that number one, obviously the technicals, because you just want everything to work all the time. And number two, it was when the postman knocked, oh, the dogs are going to bark. And I, I told all our listeners, I'm actually broadcasting from home and that was fine but it's just the total stress of it and missing my friends at at work I just couldn't wait to get back I mean it was incredible and I think the listeners really appreciated that I was one of the shielders so I knew when when they got that text from the government saying do not go out your house you can only look out your window I was one of those I was with them and we called us Sadie's 12 weekers and we had so many people in the same position but but I think I I don't know of anyone else. I'm sure there were other broadcasters who were in that position as well. But to be in that position for me personally, and it was my personal take, was quite scary. But also I was privileged in a way because I could totally and utterly understand what people were going through. Now, when I got back to work, as soon as Boris Johnson said, right, the shielders can now go out of their holes, I was back in the studio. And it was so much nicer. Number one, to be in control of the desk, because obviously at home, you're not in control really of anything. They're bringing your mic up and down. They're getting rid of your guests as they want it. Whereas, you know, when you're driving your own desk, it's brilliant to have that power to say, well, thank you very much. They've gone. They're probably wittering away still, but they've gone and I've moved on and you get the pace of it. But to come back, to have that control, to see my producer through the window, through the glass there, to be able to see if the phones were going, I could see that white light buzzing. And it just gave me the the confidence. And at BBC Essex, I mean, you know, I would not have gone back had I not felt it was safe. They've got a one-way system all the way around the whole place. There's only so many people that can work in the production office. There's only one person that can be in each studio. So you're swapping over with a newsreader when they're reading, you're back in. There's hand stuff everywhere. They they sanitise the studio before I go in. I've got my own toilet that is held just for me because I've been shielding. It's quite important. I don't have time to wipe down every time I go to the loo. And so they kept that for me. So I felt really safe. I felt really nervous first time I went back, obviously, because I hadn't been out, let alone seen anyone. Um, so, but to get back in, but I think they've, they've physically and to keep us all safe, they've done a brilliant job. And, and also the work they've been doing, I mean, our journos and our presenters and the producers and the boss and everything, they've made it positive with the make a difference which we may speak about later I don't know but you know they've made it as positive as you can be in that they've given all the facts they can they've given all the I mean just last week on our breakfast show we had what can you do what can't you do what are the rules because everybody gets confused and our listeners i I think they've enjoyed it because we just try to be as honest as possible and in times when we don't know you have to say we I don't know and we've even had MPs on who've said I don't know when when we've had q and A's I have many q and A's on my program and the listeners um, come up with questions and even you know the, the specialists have to sometimes say I don't know if that's the case I'll have to look up for it for you but anyway you've asked me one question there Darren you know now why I'm on radio <laughs> I mean, I can tell exactly why you're the big morning presenter. That's brilliant. Um, so you just touched very briefly upon um, Make a Difference. Um, tell us how uh, important Make a Difference stories are to, to programming at BBC Essex. 
Do you know, it's my favourite part of my programme. I do a four hour programme now, so we do four Make a Differences. And I also have the guy who's behind our Make a Difference in the studio with me every Wednesday to talk about the other stories that have come up. Um, I know that like our parents lived through the blitz and said there was a blitz spirit and people helped each other and you know the, the, the doors were always open and people were always in and out, someone was bombed out, everyone helped them out, took the kids in, gave them blankets, whatever. And, and in, a, in its own way, I think this Make a Difference has been that and, and it's highlighted what people, what normal people are doing for other normal people and, and realising that, you know, we may all live in our own bubble most of the time and we go to work, we pay the mortgage, we pay the rent, we get the kids up for school, whatever, we look after the chihuahuas and we get on with our own lives. And suddenly with the make a difference, you had like firms who would say, right, we'll give everything that we earn from something this week and it's been thousands to the kid who's walked all the way to his grandmother's and back 40 times and raised five pounds and they're just as important and they're so you know they're not just supporting yes the nhs fantastic but they're also supporting the family next door and they're providing i mean this week because it's been school, going back to school week we've had certain people who are giving uniforms and providing uniforms for kids who are going back and there's one little um, girl who's been supplying packed lunches for kids going back to school when their parents just are finding it tough and maybe one parent has had to lose their job because they've had to stay home and look after the kids and I think it's shown that actually we, we may get on with it and we may be quite private as English British people we sort of you know we're not brilliant at knocking on doors and this time we have knocked on doors and we have said how are you and I think the make it difference has highlighted that and given people a real a real bonus and a real energy to this is a dreadful time it will end eventually and we're helping each other to get through it so i, I think it's a brilliant idea and I, yeah. I love it love it i mean everyone is saying that across the bbc and that's that's what's really really positive to hear um now you're the presenter on, on mid morning so it'd be great to find out a little bit more um aside from the make a difference about your show the types of um stories that you feature types of guests you know how much at the moment it's coronavirus versus non-coronavirus kind of stories and I suppose also when I say the type of guests you know are you having celebrities on or is it just experts you know a little bit more info into the mid-morning show would be great yeah well I, I also I've got to say on my show that you talk they listen and it's your show so we'll I try and find the stories that people are going to be chatting about at the supermarket or at the pub when they're allowed to go there or at the school gates or to each other. And I really think it's important for people to have a voice. So I try and do those stories. Now, sometimes they're the light and flippant ones. Like we had a story just the other week about um, uh, the old adverts because the tap tap of, of Asda is coming back. So, and they obviously people love that. In the same time, we're on there talking about depression uh, in young men. And yes, we get the experts we'll also try and get real people to talk about it so not just the ex I don't want just experts because I find it quite wearing I like it when people is and say this is how I coped when we did a thing about diabetes 2 recently I'm type 2 diabetes rather and we had real people saying yes I did this diet and it helped me and it got me through rather than just diet dietitians coming on telling you what you should do it's, it's a really people-based program we could talk about coronavirus COVID-19 every day of the week and people will call in every day because it is the big thing it is a big worry um are we going to get through it how are we going to get through it what are the facts and everything and of course i would say i would say every week we'll do at least one story at least one and we could do one every day it's 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 a difficult balance so you want to get all the news there and you want to get all the coronavirus stuff that people sh want to be talking about but you also have got to balance that with this is every day. This is every, it's going on every day. I mean, obviously something breaks in Essex, it's top story and we'll do it for four hours if it needs to be done. But we, there is a balance to be met. We don't have, you know, some people may go, oh, I've had enough of that. I've, I'm overloaded. I need a break. And then we, do, you know, there are other things. Celebrities, we'll have them all on. We'll have MPs answering questions. We have specialists coming in to do Q and A's, but, but real people really, real stories. That, that's, what, that's what I love. Right, and 
we're obviously a, a, a few months away now from Christmas, dare I say it. Uh, are you planning ahead for those big moments, um, you know, the, the Halloween, the Christmas kind of stories? Do you think it'll be different this year in terms of um, the stories that you're working on at, at BBC Essex? Oh yeah, it, it's so sad in a way because normally, you know, we've got, we've got the bonfires that one of us presenters will always be at to start the the bonfire off on firework night. We'll always be by now. We'd have been booking up. Oh, who's t turning on the Christmas lights here, there, and everywhere across Essex? I mean, there's so many places that have fantastic lights in Essex, so we're always busy at that. Oh, the Christmas period, it's really busy. I think. I can't see much of that happening. I really can't. I think it'd be a lot of virtual stuff going on or very sort of, um, again, family features going on. And of course we'll feature the Halloween, so on and so forth. And may even have some fun in the studio, bringing in a funny hat or whatever. And uh, I'll have some Christmas crackers in my own personal studio. But normally we'd be at the Panto. I mean, I've been in loads of Pantos as well. And it's a real shame that is, that is such a shame that, you know, most are not going to be happening. It's going to be a different time. What we'll try and do is, and it sounds boring to say, but we'll try and find the positive out of it. So there will be people who will be doing positive stuff. There will be, um, I'm sure a Father Christmas will appear online for the kids rather than being able to take them and sit him on his knee. In the village I live in, they have um, a Father Christmas come round that doesn't look like that's going to happen or it might come around and he might just wave and rather than saying hello to the kids. So it's certainly to put a kibosh. I mean, look at all the stuff we've missed as well this year that we couldn't go out to do. I mean, we have the, the Clacton, the air show at Clacton is legendary and it's like four days. We're, we're broadcasting live from there. That all went by the by VJ day, V day, all those things changed of course. And, um, but, but we try and celebrate in, in a positive way rather than going, oh, we couldn't do that. We, you know, we'll, we'll find a way. I'll, I'll be playing my Christmas songs. I love a Christmas song. I They'll, be the starting soon. They'll be starting <laughs> soon. Um, now, if you had to pitch your show, your station, how, how would you do it? For the people of Essex, by the people of Essex that's it really it's it really is it's a people station we try really hard to represent Essex with with all its nuances and 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 I love it that we're typecast because the rest of the world doesn't really know what Essex is about beautiful little villages stunning scenery amazing beaches and and the coastline is the longest in the country and I love it but I, I'd really say it's BBC Essex is for the people and it's by the people of Essex. Okay. Lovely. Now it'd be great to find out a little bit more about um about yourself, Sadie. Um what's been sort of you know your proudest moment in radio? Right. I've got a couple really actually um which uh, the first one is I've been through breast cancer twice and I know lots of other people have. I'm absolutely not on my own. Thank God it's one of those cancers they seem to be able to cure in a lot of cases um, and I had to make the decision do I talk about it on air or not um, I decided to talk about it on air and one of my proudest moments is when I get um, letters emails calls from people who say I found a lump and I didn't go to the doctors but then I heard you talk about it and I thought well you did it and you're all right so I went and I've had emails from women who said you know if I'd left it I wouldn't be here and thanking me and that my personal time makes me proud and another time was when we had a young girl of 13 ring up and uh, she chatted to me and during the conversation it came out that she was self-harming now this is any presenter would know <clears throat> excuse me is is a is a dangerous situation because this girl is underage she's talking to me on air it's live she hadn't said to my producer i i i harm i self-harm so i had to deal with it as best I could um, in like saying, so, you know, do you want to talk about this and so on and so forth. And very gently we spoke in the conversation. I knew she needed to talk. And even though I was worried, sort of thinking, I don't know what the protocol is here. I don't know whether I should be talking about this, but I can't let this 13 year old not talk if she wants to talk my producer was right across it the boss was right across it and we were really careful and she did, she hadn't given her name proper name or anything and and at the end of it we'd had a conversation and I said will you she hadn't told her mum 
And I said, I, th I, think, you ha I think you need to tell your mum. Your mum will help you through this, but you need to tell your mum. The next day, her mum rang up. And I obviously thought, oh my goodness, she's going to go, she's going to go mad. And she, she came on and she said to me, Sadie, I just want to thank you because my girl said to me, have you listened, did you listen to Sadie today? Because she knows I always listen to you. And I said, no, I missed it. She went, well, can you listen to it on, on playback? Can you listen to it again? And, and, and she said, oh, I will do, I will do. She said, in the end, she made me listen to it. I didn't realise she said she'd been on and I didn't know. And she said, thank you so much because now... We can deal with it. And that girl now is just left university. She's got an amazing job. I still keep in contact with her. And that must be for a radio presenter. I just say thank you for allowing me to be your ear when you needed it and and to help you talk with your mum about it. And also she, she's fine she's out there now she's in control she's a young woman who's on her way so i i you know that for me just the proudest moment two amazing proud moments there um and so from proud to sort of funny what's been your sort of funniest moment in radio <laughs> well we have the blooper tape at christmas it's embarrassing because <laughs> it's normally me I mean, I'm terrible with people's names. I'm terrible. <laughs> Just the other day I did one and my producer said, oh, we got three blooper tape moments in one show. <laughs> so, but one of the funniest ones, I was doing a late night show on BBC Radio London and uh, <laughs> we used to have this, the, the celebrities and the musos used to come in after their show and be my guests. So uh, this night we've got this guest in and he's uh, chattering away and we get this call in and my phone op sam says to me a mm, little bit suspicious this one as we know as phony hosts we're live on bbc people think we've got a button we can press we haven't so i'm sort of thinking okay keep your finger on the dial ready to take the uh, ready to take them out comes on his chat and he said um that band that you've got in there now are really good really good and i'm working with their brother at the moment and he, they're really good so i said oh that's good and he was robbie from london robbie from london so i said all right i said i said did you, did you perform yourself he went yeah 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 i'm a singer so i said all oh, right okay i said so so um tell us what your name is we'll give you a plug and he went robbie williams <laughs> so i said i said oh well that's a shame i said because there's already a robbie williams do you get muddled up with him a bit and he went yeah yeah do a bit actually so i said all right he said because i am robbie williams and i went oh really <laughs> not believing him at all i said oh really so i said go on in if you're robbie williams give me a bit of entertain you then and he went let me entertain you and i went you really are robbie williams aren't you went, yes i'm robbie williams and it was robbie williams had run me up and i was saying to him oh there's another robbie williams do you get muddled up with him and it was the next day in the sun there was a two-page spread and it was so horrible and robbie if you ever heard this or ever knew it wasn't me that reported it or anything but the next day in the sun double page spread center spread robbie williams really sad so sad and lonely he calls up a late night radio show <laughs> and tells them he's Robbie Williams <laughs> and I sort of thought it wasn't me I just I thought it was fantastic so um anyway they got my name spelt right so that was quite nice but uh, <laughs> that that was one of the funniest ever that sounds like a great great story um now I uh, don't want to take up too much more of your time but I, I think what would what would be great to end on Sadie is just to sort of say what you think uh, is the best thing about local radio you know for someone who's, who's, who's spent many years working in local radio what is it about local radio that you love it's the personal touch that's what it's about it's really your listeners really getting to know you really trusting you and if i do an outside broadcast and they turn up and, and if i'm shopping and they say hello sadie how you doing or what you doing how's it happening and all that it's the personal touch of it which i'm sure that you know the national radio stations get as well but i think with the local radio when they've chosen to choose a local radio station to listen to instead of one, two, three, four, Capital Heart, whatever. When they've chosen a local radio station, it's because they get to know you and they trust you. And I, I think it, I know that quirky, this sounds really sort of 
I don't know. Um, it feels like a family. It feels like, and I do say that. I say, you know, you're my phone in family and, and they ring up and we have the regulars and we have brand new ones and we have people who just found us. And, and we say, you know, I just say, welcome to me phone in family. And, uh, and they call back again. I, I think that's, that's the best thing about it. Just that personal touch. Perfect. It's summed up perfectly. Well, Sadie Nine, thank you so much for your time today. Mid-morning presenter at BBC Essex. Uh, thank you for being a part of Broadcast Revolution's Radio Road Trip. I love it. Thanks a lot, Darren. Cheers. Thank you. You've been listening to Broadcast Revolution's Radio Road Trip. Follow us on Twitter at Broadcast Revo and Instagram at Broadcast Revolution. Hashtag join the Broadcast Revolution.